Hey everyone, my name is Vitek. I'm a coloring book artist and today I'm going to show you how I drew this picture for our coloring book, Legendary Worlds. So Opus Art Supplies commissioned this piece um, for our Kickstarter. They are an amazing art store. They have six stores in British Columbia and they requested a special piece for Legendary Worlds. They actually asked for a magical opus outpost in a tree with gnomes doing plein air painting in the garden. Um, and they wanted the store, the opus store in a tree trunk. And they also wanted the gnomes to be painting at their easels and doing art. So I decided to use garden gnomes. I thought that would be a pretty cool idea. Garden gnomes painting in a fantastic legendary garden. And there's a lake behind them and uh, as you can see I'm uh, drawing one of these gnomes sitting with a sketchbook doing some sketching. The gnome at the left is uh, doing some plein air painting and the one in the foreground is doing some painting as well. So I'm using a lead holder here, a Stadler lead holder. Um, you can see it's pretty blunt, but I usually t tend to do that. Uh, I just use a blunt pencil all the time. I have no real need to sharpen it. <laughs> Here I'm drawing some mountains in the background, some hills, making it look kind of 3D. I love these little hills, they're like little Mario land. I have to fill the space with uh, the leaves and flowers and plants because uh, with coloring books you can't leave lots of blank space. There has to be filler, to, so there's things to color because the worst thing is to fill a giant area of white space with color. I mean, you need to have shapes and things to fill in. So yeah, garden gnomes. What are they? What are garden gnomes? Well, I looked this up and it's pretty fascinating. For the longest time, people thought that garden gnomes originated in Germany in 1893, but now it's been found that they originated in a town in Poland called Drawno. But it used to be part of Germany before World War II, so. Um, sometime in the 1800s or a little earlier. Actually, the term gnome was um, coined in the 16th century. And they're small creatures that live underground. And apparently, they could move through the earth like ghosts. Or if you're a video gamer, like no clipping, just sliding through the earth. That's pretty crazy. 
And gnomes are featured in a lot of fantasy. I know Tolkien had gnomes, but they're a bit different. And when I looked this up, I found out that there was this guy called Henry Sunderland uh, from New Zealand. And he took the first garden gnome to the South Pole in 1977. He traveled all the way down to the South Pole. He had this gnome mobile, the sled with a gnome on it. I think the gnome's name is Charlie, if I remember correctly. Um, and he made it all the way to the South Pole. He took some pictures, some amazing pictures. And he, after that, he became a gnomologist. <laughs> and I think he's dedicated his life to gnomes, which is pretty crazy. Um, then in 1980, he tried to get to a gnome to the North Pole, but he got stopped by some customs officials. They always make life great. And uh, they canceled his trip to the North Pole. But finally in 2014, just recently, he got the gnome to the North Pole. So, like many years later. There's also this phenomenon. People steal gnomes from gardens and then travel around the world and take photos of them and send postcards back to the owner with their gnome. Um, there's a picture here of a uh, gnome liberated. <laughs> um, this one um, actually in 2009, a Belgian garden gnome liberation group rescued 15 garden gnomes from a couple in Belgium and they left a note. These gnomes belong in the forest, not in your garden. And then there's a French group. The French are very radical and they have a no garden gnome liberation front. So <clears throat> over the course of a year, the front stole over 150 garden gnomes. <laughs> and they, they um, contend that the garden gnomes deserve the same freedoms with which they are blessed. Um, the leader of the group is actually charged with stealing over 150 garden gnomes over a period of several years and then he went to prison and fined. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, there's some pretty hilarious photos online of people stealing gnomes and showing them in different places. It's kind of the whole thing. The Celebration uh, Front has a whole Facebook page and everything. So here I'm drawing another gnome in the background. He's sitting on a little hill and has an easel. I think I got his hat right, finally. And now we're down to inking, so this is sped up a little bit. And the multiliner makes very um, even lines. I love I love these multiliners. There's also Staler pens, uh, fine liners, but these Copic multiliners, I personally love them. The ink is really smooth, but it takes a bit longer to dry, so be careful not to smell it. Here I'm 
I'm drawing a bunch of flowers. I thought I'd try in this dirt texture by doing a bunch of uh, horizontal lines. Uh, looks kind of like dirt. A bit of a darker texture. So Legendary Worlds is our second coloring book and we filled it with a lot of imaginary scenes. Uh, where Le Legendary Landscapes had a few more realistic scenes, this one has a lot more of the imaginary fantasy type scenes. There's fairies and gnomes and dragons and uh, outer space and prehistoric times. We put a lot of passion into that book, so we're pretty excited. Oh, and the endless detail of these flowers. I can draw like a million flowers here. So when I took a break, it looks like Carrie jumped in here and started inking. She cannot help herself. When I come back, I find my piece is partially inked. No, actually she's an amazing inker. She's an inking machine. And uh, it's kind of nice to have some of this done for me. <laughs> I got back. Thanks, Carrie. the horizon and some far away uh, fields and things. I really like the way this world turned out. It's pretty magical and whimsical. It feels like some sort of um, paradise. I'd love to just sit around and draw on these hills and, and among the flowers. You can see these cool hills and lake in the background. It's really interesting. I'm doing the final details, just a few more flowers and things in the background. And basically the piece is almost there.
This is uh, one of my favorite pieces in the book, actually, so I'm really happy Opus uh, asked us to do this. It's really creative. If you like the video, please subscribe or like our page. Uh, it would mean a lot to us, and we're going to keep posting drawing videos and coloring videos. Lots of cool stuff coming really soon. So you can find our book, Legendary Worlds, on our website, colorworth.com. And it's also available in a lot of stores um, in Canada. And thanks for watching.